Hello, my name is Domi. I'm co-founder of Hartel. Here with me is Yossi Monstern, who is also the other co-founder. Jackie Klein somewhere in the crowd. The baby. <laughs> Our head of museum partnership. And I'm Faye, head of education at the Wallace Collection. I'm here to tell you about the Magic Horn, a game we have developed for and with the help of the Wallace Collection. I'm the techie guy. <laughs> okay, so a few words about Alter. Uh, we are a young company uh, with a great passion for storytelling. We develop digital games for museums, uh, and uh, the games we develop use stories and animation to make the artworks come alive. Uh, in this way, we create a uh, an emotional link between uh, children and works of art. We strongly believe uh, that active engagement is the best way to facilitate learning. Go ahead. Uh, let me show you a quick demo. So you arrive at the Wallace Collection, you switch on your mobile, and the first character you meet is Cornelius. <laughs> He's gatekeeper of the kingdom, and you desperately need your help. Uh, the kingdom is in danger, and you are the only one who can save it. To complete this ambitious quest, you will need the help of works of art you meet along the way. One of these is A Woman at a Mirror by Jean Wu. Uh, once you answer the riddle and open the gate, <coughs> she starts talking. Mirror, mirror, tell me true, am I the fairest? Oh, no, not again. All day long. You are the fairest of them all. You are the fairest of them all. <sighs> we have visitors. A new admirer. Uh, afterwards, you can click the text box and ask your own question. This gives the feeling of actually conversing with the character. In this way, you meet and befriend some of the most fascinating and famous characters in your museum. Some might be too eager to help you. <gasps> the secret horn of St. Hubert? Yes, I have several books on the subject. Don't start him on that. <laughs> We'd sit here and listen to him all day long. Others won't be that happy to meet you. Ooh, who is it? How dare you disrupt our royal sleep? Still others will send you on a mission and congratulate you upon successful completion of the task. Congratulations! You have speedily proved your warrior prowess and your integrity. And your sword can be named. During this interaction, you form an emotional connection with the characters you meet along the way. It's the same as between people. You like and dislike them, they are funny or annoying or clever or sad. So, what all this has to do with learning? Once you've completed the interaction with the character, you unlock the information about the artwork. Thus, the reading about the artwork is turned into an achievement, something you had to work for. And of course, you've already formed a special connection with the character, so you'll be more interested to know more about her. The game facilitates learning in other ways. To move ahead in the game, you have to answer visual readers, you have to pick up objects in paintings, and you have to look for paintings or spe specific works of art in the museums. All of this refocus you on the details of the artwork. I embedded in the game are all kinds of facts, and so you le learn first hand from Louis XV himself that his nickname was Louis the Beloved, 
or you discover what a symbol is while asking her for a prophecy. The children develop cognitive skills through cracking color codes and other codes, answering visual memory challenges, and more. The game was developed uh, with the help yeah, of the yeah, um, less unfair yeah. education. So um, this goes back to what one of the other speakers was talking about, about collaboration. Um, and this game was uh, made with the help of our local primary school, St. Vincent, who we've got a very good relationship with. So before uh, the script was decided, before what the theme of the game was, um, Yoshi and, and Nami sat down with a year five class um, to come up with ideas for the actual game. Uh, and then the, uh, the second phase was actually they came, the class came to the museum and tested out the script. And actually they had as much fun uh, playing the paper version of the game than they did with the, uh, you know, with the, um, the digital, the final copy. Um, and then they came and tested uh, the game when it was first developed. So it was very collaborative. Um, and that's something that we as the museum were able to facilitate because, like Cambridge were talking about earlier, this idea that we are a trusted institution. So that these guys wouldn't have been able to knock on the door of any school to say, can you, your kids test out our new game? But because it was us, um, their local museum, who we work with very closely, um, they were able to um, uh, um, uh, trust us to be able to help develop this game. Um, and it was, uh, the children felt very invested in it. Um, they were very excited when they saw that the, their ideas that they had come up with at the beginning got into the final game. Um, um, they were very interested. They came up with lots of things that we didn't think that they would necessarily, um, would be important to them. So one thing, and we were talking about it earlier, they were very keen that they lose points as they play the game, as well as earning points, because it was important for them to feel that they've earned it. Um, so that was quite important. Um, and uh, some of the um, simplest uh, puzzles um, or the things that, you know, um, when, yeah. when um, Nami was putting together, didn't think, didn't spend that much time on, ended up being the most popular things in the, in the game. So actually this collaborative process with the school was incredibly important. Yeah. And that's... I'm just... Yeah. So uh, to sum it all up, our aim with this first game was to bring the Wallace Collection alive through storytelling, animations, quizzes and games that actively engage, you, engage children to learn through play. Uh, the game is played within the physical museums, uh, so, ki so kids interact with paintings and sculptures that simultaneously come alive on their mobiles. I guess that's it. Yeah. Uh, we also developed uh, a home version of the game, uh, and so you can play it from home. Uh, we'd, be, we'd be delighted for you all to try it, to download it and try it. It's available on the Play and the App Store, so. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you very much.